My name is Bruce Hammond, I'm the son of Ruby. So mum had um, many elements and was an avid artist, a singer. She was a freedom fighter, she was an advocate for change. She was somebody who actively saw elements in our communities that needed change. That was who Ruby was from a very young age, growing up in Kingston and then moving to Adelaide to work with the Postmaster General. And she tells the story in the early days of her not being able to be work front of shop in Kingston because she was Aboriginal, because she was black. And so she'd be hidden away in the back of the store. And that was the environment that grew the elements of, you know, we've got to make change. She actively, as a very young woman, got connected with the Aboriginal legal rights movement, which was, you know, she was part of the early setup of that organisation with lawyers in Adelaide. And even in my mid-teens, it was about um, young Aboriginal men at that stage hanging themselves in custody. I honestly think people underestimated her and she could use that to her an advantage. And it was a skill she probably carried through her life and the ability to embrace different levels of the community and bring them together in a cohesive way. And to also share the story of the injustice and to be able to apply it across other people's space. So she could quickly bring other people into that environment and say, it's not just about us. It's not just about blackfellas. If they can do this to us, they can do it to women. And if they can do it to women, they can do it to you. And if they can do it to you, they can do it to anybody. She had the ability to sit in the square with people who were alcoholics and going through the court process and then pick herself up half an hour later and be at Parliament House, holding court with advisers and political um, people, and then come into the port. The port was a hive for uh, workers' rights. It was a great life because you had all these Aboriginal families together growing up in Taparu or Largs or Angle Park, and everybody knew everybody. There's a famous story of the referendum where Mum and two of her best friends went to the Adelaide airport and they, they said, what are we going to do? So they got their best dress, they got on the tarmac to a young 21-year-old politician and put a Vote for Aborigines badge on him and it got on the front page of the advertiser. That was the start of her political aspirations. She never aspired to be a politician. She aspired to fix a problem. But she was clever enough and articulate enough to know that in order to make change, you needed to be a decision maker. To set your own community party up it was unheard of in those days. It was an extremely difficult time because the policy wasn't being developed. And she knew that she wouldn't, or was highly unlikely that she would get enough votes to win. But the issue was needed to be put on the table. And many of the people who were purporting to be mum supporters split off because they knew that we would take a portion of the vote and that would inhibit their election. Setting up your own political party and challenging the systems of inequity at the top seemed like a simple solution. Of course, it was probably the most difficult way to do it and, um, and seen as very radical at the time. Um, but not, not for us. It was, oh, well, Mum's going to run for Parliament. What's, what's the big deal about that? Standing for Parliament and not winning was not a failure, it was a huge success because it proved that we could actively play and engage in that space and have our agendas on the table and have the ability to make change in policy development. The Workers' Memorial being in the port where we all grew up, oh, very proud, very proud. A small acknowledgement in a big story. I see us being educated, I see us being absorbed into the community and I would hope that we're able to take our position in the community whereby we haven't had the opportunity. I would hope that we become lawyers, doctors, chemists and so forth in the, in the community, opportunities which we've never had before. And this, these, what I'm talking about now would be our children, our today children. Leaving us relatively young with cancer, I firmly believe her best years were to come because she had the ability to connect the dots and that never happened. Her legacy is her family 
our ability to grow up in that space, survive it. And in our own private ways, we, we continue that, that story of, of acknowledging the injustice, what is the solution, how can we fix it, and how can we bring other people along on the journey. So I think that, from a family point of view, is clearly the legacy that I've been given.